Welcome to my lecture online. Here we're starting a new playlist of algebra videos specifically for the parabola. Now, what is so special about the parabola? Well, by definition, the parabola is the graph that you get when you draw the quadratic equation. The general form of the quadratic equation is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and the only requirement there is that a cannot be zero. You cannot have a quadratic equation if you don't have the x squared term. Now, b could be zero, c could be zero, they could both be zero, as long as a is not zero, you have a quadratic equation, and when you draw a graph, it looks like a parabola. So the shape of a parabola, well, there's either the lowest point on the parabola or the highest point on the parabola. In either case, that point is called the vertex, and sometimes we write it as the coordinates x sub v and y sub v. And it doesn't matter if the parabola opens upward or the parabola opens downward. You will have what we call the highest or the lowest point called the vertex. Then if we draw a line through the vertex, a perpend uh, not a perpendicular line, but, uh, well, a line that is straight up and down, a vertical line that goes to the vertex, then that line is called the axis of symmetry. In other words, the left side and the right side of the graph looks exactly the same. If you were to take this on a piece of paper and you were to fold it over, this would exactly land on the other side. So this perfect symmetry of the left side and the right side when we have what we call the axis of symmetry. Now when the vertex is on the y-axis or at the origin either way, then you can see that the line of symmetry is indeed the y-axis. And of course I probably should put down the y there and put down the x over here. Here again, write this as the y and the x-axis. So you can see that in this case the axis of symmetry is indeed the y-axis when the vertex is away from the y-axis and of course the line of symmetry is parallel to the y-axis. Now when do we have a parabola that opens upward? It is upward when a is greater than zero. In other words when the coefficient in front of x squared is a positive number the parabola opens upward. When the coefficient in front of the x squared term is negative, when a is less than zero, the parabola opens downward. Now, if both b and c are zero, we only have y equals ax squared, then the parabola will have the vertex at the origin. Either it will open upward if a is greater than zero, and it will be at the vertex opening downward if it's less than zero. Again, that's the case when b and c are both zero at the same time. When either b, when b is not zero, then the vertex will be away from the y-axis. If b is zero, then the vertex will be on the y-axis, but it will not be at the origin if c is not zero. Now, all those things will be explained in much more detail in the videos to come. This is simply a quick overview of the problem. Notice that the parabola will continue to open upward, so as you go further and further and further up, when y becomes 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, a million, the vertex will, the, the parabola will continue to widen, and of course when you go up to infinity, then the parabola will be infinitely wide. Now that seems like a strange thing because it appears as if it doesn't get as wide as quickly as you go up high in the y value, but the answer is yes, it continues to go wider and wider and wider, and when you reach an infinite height, the problem will be infinitely wide. It doesn't appear that way, but it is indeed the case. One more thing, what are the coordinates, the x and y coordinates of the vertex? Well, we can find the x coordinate by taking that, setting that equal to minus b over 2a. Remember, b is the coefficient in front of the x term and a is the coefficient in front of the x squared term. So minus b over 2a is the x coordinate of the vertex no matter where that vertex is. Then to find the y coordinate all we have to do is take that value, whatever that value is, and plug it back into the original equation for x squared and for x. In other words, we have a times x squared, but x of course becomes minus b over 2a plus b times x. Again, x becomes minus b over 2a, and this will give you the y coordinate of the vertex. Of course, we'll show you some examples of that as well. That also means that when we set x equal to minus b over 2a, that will be the equation of the axis of symmetry. I think I have that over here. The equation for the axis of symmetry is the equation x equals minus b over 2a, 
and that will then of course be a point on the line that cuts right through the vertex. For the particular value of the vertex for x, we have minus b over 2a, of course, because it has to be on the axis of symmetry. That makes sense when you think about it. Again, the vertex is at the origin when both b and c are equal to 0. If c is not 0, but b is 0, then it will be somewhere, the vertex will be somewhere on the y-axis. So at least that gives us an idea of what a parabola is. Notice the parabola will be in very different ways, drawn in different ways, depending upon what that equation looks like, and we'll show you all the tricks in the book to help you draw various aspects of the parabola when A, B, and C take on specific values. So stay tuned, and we'll teach you all about the parabola. <laughs> okay. All right. That's a good start. We'll continue on the next video. You were holding a coffee.